So in this video we are going to go through the actual script itself. Now uh, before we get started this is Maya 2011 and there's been a lot of improvements to the script editor uh, over the years. Older versions of the script editor you, you would be pulling your hair out to do something this large. As you can see this is close to a thousand lines of code and this isn't actually that big either. That's the funny thing. This is this is about a medium sized script or so. Um, I, I mean I've got scripts that are way way longer than this. Um, but over the years they've added the ability to have um, multiple tabs so we can have multiple files open. We have the uh, uh, line numbering. Old old versions of Maya would say hey error in line 7 and then here sit there actually one, two, three, four. Um, real pain in the butt. And the biggest advantage that that is pretty new to, or is new to Maya 2011, is the syntax highlighting, uh, because it is so difficult to read something longer than a paragraph when it's just light gray on dark gray, or vice versa. You know, it just um, this makes it really, really easy to read. Uh, red is is comments the green are protected words um, this little light blue light greenish blue here that's uh, th those are mail commands and then the yellow are strings so this makes it much easier to read and see what you're doing and uh, so we'll be using this for the rest of our lesson but I just want to give a shout out because at at the office we are using um, we're not on 2011 yet and I use Mail Studio Pro for all my programming and this is a fantastic plugin. It's relatively inexpensive, and uh, it's phenomenal. I've used it for years. Uh, you can also use the right expressions. It replaces the expression editor. Um, not only can you have multiple versions open, but it will actually list all the procs in the file, so you can just double click it, and you'll sh go straight to that that area. Um, it'll highlight the brackets, so. Um, if you've ever done a lot of coding and you're doing a lot of nested stuff and you lose track of your brackets, that's a really nice handy feature to make sure that, that they all match up. Wonderful program. Uh, at the time of this writing, it does not look like they've yet to come up with a 2011 version. I don't know if they will or not. I, I, I hope they do. I love this. Uh, with all the improvements in the script editor, this is still my preferred way of programming, and I hope they do come up with a 2011 version but if you're in an older version of Maya and you're doing a lot of mail scripting I highly recommend checking this out and giving it a shot so before we get too heavily into the mail script itself I want to talk a little bit about local and global procs because I, I see them misused a lot I've seen some people they just make everything global um, to avoid certain problems and it, it, it really because it's it, it's a misuse and it can cause problems if you're polluting your global space. In fact, uh, I had to restart Maya because I had messed with the global procs to do an example, and then I couldn't set it back because it was all floating in the global space, and so I had to basically restart Maya in order for it to take effect. Um, Maya does not have object-oriented programming in Mel. Uh, Python, that's perhaps another story but not Mel. So it doesn't have classes, it doesn't have private or protective functions, but what it does have is public and private or not public, I'm sorry, it's got global and local procs. And that is the closest it has the closest it has to uh, local and global procedures. And just to illustrate what I'm talking about, I'm going to load a script here. Now notice this is in the uh, my documents Maya scripts folder. That is a path that Maya recognizes when you install it. It, it sets that path up automatically. Uh, notice that this doesn't have a, a absolute path. It doesn't say like C drive, temp, or anything like that. Um, Maya is going to be able to find it because it knows the path that this is sitting in. And what you want to do is you want to drag these scripts to that folder, or it's, there's a few folders that Maya can read, but drag uh, those scripts to that folder and then restart Maya. They have to be there before Maya starts, otherwise it won't find it. 
and if you try to run this directly off the disk as it's written here it's just not going to work um, because it doesn't know what the folder structure is it doesn't know what the path is so drag this to, to your local uh, Maya scripts folder and it should work just fine so what we're going to do is we're going to source that there and first thing it does is it sources the second script and then this proc is going to call these two functions these two functions uh, these two pro uh, procedures live in this other file and if we run it we're going to get an error it cannot find proc example 2 uh, why not so let's create a new tab and let's load up that second one the reason why is that this is a local proc so scripts outside or procedures outside of the script cannot talk to this it doesn't know anything about it this script can only talk to this script through the global procs so the only way that we're going to be able to get to this is either from within the script or to make it global and this provides you some protection uh, for example let's say that you had a function for um, I don't know, doing uh, some string replacement, for example. Um, maybe you have the, uh, your, your buddy has a very similar proc that he named the same thing in his file. Well, if they're both global, they're going to fight each other. Um, the latest one's going to win. And if your code is way different than your buddy's code, and then you're running his script, and then you call your proc, and it's calling it, you know, you see how they kind of, they'll, ping pong each other and you'll be pulling your hair out trying to figure out why your procedure is not working the way you wrote it because it's not calling yours it's calling your buddies because they're all floating around in global space if you keep them local then your global procedure within or your procedures within this script are only going to be able to talk to your locals and that will really really help um, avoid those kind of conflicts. One other thing is you'll see here it's kind of a naming convention. For the global procs I always add uh, double helix for uh, all those procedures and what that does is that will make sure that I don't accidentally create um, say a procedure that Maya already is created with the same name for example or somebody else creates a script uh, say from another company like like if you bought a plug-in or something like that um, and this helps avoid any uh, any conflicts because the global space uh, they have to be unique or they'll override each other um, so how can we fix this Well, we can fix this real quickly by maybe rimming that line out and then we will call it from within this global proc source that I'll source that and now it's finding that second proc because it's calling it from within its own script so that's a quick overview of local and global procs and a little bit about our naming convention that we're using um, the important thing is that you have a naming convention not that you stick necessarily to ours but it really will help you in the long run um, if you establish some kind of convention and and stay to it, uh, our procedures are all capitalized, makes it easier to read. Variables are lowercase. Anything with global in the name will have the the name of the company on it. And again, it's just standard practices that I've picked up over the years.